total pot of money available in the UK to invest in original TV production is shrinking and may shrink further. The danger is not only that UK producers, many of them in this room, or that UK audiences will suffer, but also that at the very moment when the opportunities for British talent around the world are greater than they've ever been, that we will miss a historic opportunity. It's happening because the broadcasters, who've traditionally been the biggest investors in original British TV beyond the BBC, are fishing in a stagnant or declining pool of advertising. Without new creative strategies and business models, or unless other players or other solutions appear, the total amount of money for new talent and new ideas, and for the BBC's exceptional independent sector, may reduce further. The UK needs a market in TV advertising which functions effectively, but it also needs to be a market in which ad-funded broadcasters can be confident enough of commercial success that they invest in quality content. Arrangements which risk a downward spiral of falling prices and disinvestment in programming will end up serving no one, not advertisers, not producers, and certainly not the British public. Longer term, I believe that Canvas will be key because it offers broadcasters like ITV4 and Channel 5 the chance to replace the current advertising model or, 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 or to augment it with one which matches advertising to consumers more precisely and which therefore drives much greater value. Crucially, Canvas gives them the chance to develop this new model and maintain control of it themselves. And finally, I want to turn to Sky. All the analysts believe that Sky is going to get a lot bigger still and will end up dwarfing not just the BBC but all the other commercial broadcasters put together. A year ago, standing here or hereabouts, James Murdoch fretted aloud about the lamentable dominance of the BBC, but he was able to do that only by leaving Sky out of the equation altogether. Sky is already a far more powerful commercial counterweight to the BBC than ITV ever was. It's well on its way to being the most dominant force in broadcast media in this country. Moreover, if News Corp's proposal to acquire all of the remaining shares in Sky goes through, Sky will not just be Britain's biggest broadcaster, but a full part of a company which is also dominant in national newspapers, as well as one of, one of Britain's biggest publishers. According to Ender's analysis, it will be a concentration of cross-media ownership, which would not be allowed in the United States or Australia, News Corp's other two most important markets. Sky is not the enemy of quality British television. In fact, it's an important provider of it. But when it comes to investing in original British production, it's a different story. When ITV was the dominant commercial player in UK TV, it poured money into original programming. And often in key genre, like drama in the 1980s and 1990s, it did a better job than the BBC. It's great that Sky is going to make the HBO archive of outstanding programs available to British viewers over the next few years. And it's great they're announcing a few more commissions in comedy. But it's time that Sky pulled its weight by investing much, much more in British talent and British content. Sky talks of a programming budget in the year to June 2010 of around 1.9 billion, of which sports, movies, and carriage fees are about 1.7 billion. Sky doesn't declare its annual investment in original UK non-news, non-sport content, but the latest estimate puts it at around 100 million pounds, not much more than Channel 5's UK, origina UK origination budget, despite the fact that Sky's total turnover is more than 15 times that of 5. Sky's marketing budget is larger than the entire programme budget of ITV1. As a proportion of Sky's own turnover and its profits, its investment in original British content is just not enough. People sometimes say to me, aren't you afraid that Sky is going to start spending more on original British programmes and will therefore be competing head to head with you? But that's what should happen. It will be good for the BBC, it will be good for the industry, it will be good for the public. Our system depends on the big commercial broadcasters backing British talent, and not just backing them with occasional commissions which are then lavishly marketed, but with week-in, week-out investment across a wide range of programmes. In Britain, you recall, Sky pays nothing for retransmitting the PSB channels, despite the fact that, taken together, they are by far the most watched channels they offer. On the contrary, the PSBs pay an EPG charge for the privilege of being on the satellite platform. Let me quote from someone who thinks that those who invest in content should get a better deal. Quote, 
asking cable companies and other distribution partners to pay a small portion of the profits they make by reselling broadcast channels, the most watched channels on their systems, will help ensure the health of the over-the-air industry in America, end of quote. The point's a simple one. It's the free-to-air US networks who invest the most in broadcast content. They're also the most popular networks in the UK cable and satellite environments. So isn't it reasonable that the distributors should pay the networks a charge in return for the right to carry them? The man who made that case is Rupert Murdoch, and in America, he's winning the argument. Fox is now receiving distribution fees from the cable companies. So why not introduce retransmission fees in this country as well? Not for the BBC, whose services are paid for by universal license fee and which will be available on all platforms, in my view, with no charges being levied by either party, but introducing them for those commercial public service broadcasters who invest significantly in UK production.